Okay, um, uh, I started the notches for the uh, handrails. I'm doing each one individually because some of the boards are slightly different thicknesses than others. I've got the materials prepped for the three handrails. They're all six inches wide, but one's one and seven eighths, one's two and one's in between the two. So uh, I'm gonna make these notches into the posts individually. And once I get this notch finished for the, the top, for you know the railing itself, then I'm gonna have one that comes in that's gonna be four and a half inches by two inches or whatever it works out being. There's the, the skirt piece. And I'll lay that out too. The easiest way I've found to actually mark these things out and uh, make them fit perfect is I actually take the piece like a cutoff from the uh, railing itself and I use that for the, the skirt piece also and mark it out with that. That way I just fit them, I don't need tape measures or anything once I've got my, my, my top point measured so that the railings are all level with one another. And I like using my battery pack saws for these because off the grid all I gotta do is have the generator running, charge them up and then I got peace and quiet. Okay, when I do this cut that fits into the mortise and the post, I like to dish it out a little bit so that uh, maybe this is 3 16 of an inch deeper in the ends. That way that the, these points here are making contact with the mortise, like right here. So that it's a real tight fit right here. Now, I'm gonna clean that up a little bit right there. This already fits real good. So when I pull my timber locks up underneath here and bolt it in here, it'll be real rock solid. Okay, the skirt piece, I just got a cut off here from it. And I just laid it out. Now I put it so that the one edge is center to the post. And uh, well, I'm going to mortise this out now. Okay, I used the battery saw to cut as much as I could. Just so I got a nice straight line. Now I'm going to clean this all up with the chisel. Okay, what I'm doing here is I took a Forstner bit on my, uh, well actually it's a Stanley speed board, but they're very similar. And I've uh, gone in there and drilled out some of the meat. I make it so I don't have to bang the chisel so much, but this is where a really sharp chisel comes into play. Okay, I'm using a firmer type chisel here where I just bump it around my hand because it's pretty sharp. So I got this, got this inside corner looking pretty nice. Now I want to just see how it fits. Get my little piece here. Here it is. Oh yeah. I'll just clean that up a little bit more and that's ready. Okay, and I use this kind of chisel, you know, regular metal cap on it. So I can take my hammer, drive in there, and clean those corners out really nice. Okay, now I'm ready to put my pieces in. Okay, I've got this piece sitting in the, in the where it's going to go. Now my measurement, for example, was uh, 69 and a quarter, so I cut it 69 and 5 sixteenths. So now I'm going to take my mallet and get over here on the other end and tap it in place. and It'll kind of put a little tension on it. Okay, let me get this piece so we can put our handrail in. Well, as the old, old timers used to say, that's as tight as a banjo string. <laughs> so what I've done now is I, I carried a mark over. It's level. Now that's the top of the handrail, the finished handrail. So what now I have to do is bring this down to level, which is whatever the thickness of the handrail, which I think in the case of this one, it's one and seven eighths. So I'll come down one and seven eighths, and then I'm going to work on plumbing this board with the deck so that it's in and out proper. So what I do is I plumbed a mark down from right here down on my deck. And my deck is perfectly square so if this is plumb what I'll do is I'll take this mark down here and I'll carry it over to the other end then I'll plumb up again and that'll be the point that I anchor this uh, skirt piece at. Okay I've got the uh, other side of the skirt which anchors into the the cabin, I've got it plumbed perfectly as far as square distance off of the deck. 
and now I've got it set perfectly level so that means I can mark it and I'll anchor it right here okay I've got this uh, dished out a little bit and then I also dished this out a little bit here because we got a little bit of an angle and we're banging it in with the mallet so this will help me get it started and once I get past that the, the log comes all the way out to my thumbnail so you won't see any of it but that way I get it in there without beating this thing up too much that's why I use the wooden mounts for everything with the timber frame it uh, doesn't beat anything up and it has a lot of momentum when you want to make pieces fit okay uh, it's going in there so bang a couple times on this end and I go back and bang a couple on that time and at the very end it usually just pops in because the length when you've got a radius is a little tight on you but as soon as you go to the actual length it fits in there perfect doesn't hurt to take a peek at the other side to make sure uh, you're not blowing anything out like in this case here I can probably clean a little bit more out with my chisel so I'm not gonna cause these splinters to explode well I started that as a furnace carpenter uh, I don't know almost 50 years ago 47 48 I guess 48 and uh, they are full of expressions but they'd be proud of this one because they'd say it's as uh, tight as a skin on a grate <laughs> okay I'm just uh, putting two six inch timber locks in this uh, the top of the rail and it's going to go down into the That ain't going nowhere. Okay, and uh, I'm just gonna put a couple galvanized nails into the rail. I got a hand screw holding it tight, and I'm right on my mark, perfect. So, I got two more of these to do, and then I'm gonna start working on the steps, but we'll finish the handrails first. Okay, so uh, this is mounted into the one inch sheathing right now. And I'll go back inside and I'll probably nail a block on the end in there between some of the framing members. But the siding is going to get cut into this. So you won't see any gaps or anything, but it that kind of even locks it in again. So what we have is a rock solid handrail. Now I've got two more to put in over here on the the, the entry for the, the steps is going to be in between this opening. And then that opening there and the one that goes back into the house, just like this one, that's what I have left to do now. Well, once you've uh, done a mortise joint like this, you've uh, basically caught up with the technology of probably, I don't know, two, three thousand, well, uh, probably three thousand years ago. They had chisels back then. Uh, <laughs> now, of course, I used my battery pack uh, skill saw. To make my notches but uh heck if you really want to go old school get yourself one of these old buck saw and cut it out with that then everything's done by hand if that really gives you a thrill personally i've done them that way for fun but i just the elbow grease and i don't have any problem using my other tools but it is kind of neat to know how they really do it that uh one in the wilderness uh, video uh Dick Pernicky. He, you watch him, that's how he did all his. But uh, I don't quite have that much energy. <laughs> okay, in the case of this uh, pair of joints, uh, it's going to be filling in. So that means you'll never be able to get a piece in that's the full length. So you have to make them just a little bit deeper. Because if I cut it a half inch short of the full length, and wiggle it around a little bit I'll get it so it's visibly hidden then I'm just gonna cut a little shim and drive it in behind it on both ends to keep it tight and then the top rail well that'll just slide in from the front so that's not a problem and on the corner here you're gonna have one coming in this way and then one coming 90 degrees this way so in reality your two pieces are gonna touch on that inside corner so these two mortise joints are going to line up so before I finish this one here I do need to cut at least this one here 
That way uh, I'm not banging into my finished work. Okay, I'm just finishing up a few of these bores here. And like I said, this one I'm going to make a little bit on the deep side. So I got plenty of room to get that piece of slide in there and still have a nice looking joint. Just take your time. Sure, sure saves a heck of a lot of chisel work, but it also gives you a nice flat spot to go back to because when you see the holes there, it's just easy cleaning.